Thank you so much for joining us, John. It's been quite a while since we haven't spoken. And I was just taken aback when I heard about all the things that glass can really do. So once again, thank you for joining us. It's so good to see you again. So John, the first thing that I think everyone will want to know, including me, is that most people don't know about glass and its importance in tech. From fiber optics to chipset, what role does Corning play in this entire ecosystem? Well, Corning is, is vital to progress in society. Our products touch people's lives in so many ways every day, but they just don't realize it. For example, if people wake up and check their social media feed or post a picture, the device they're holding has glass that makes the display work. It has Gorilla Glass that protects the device. The image or the data or the text most likely goes down optical fiber developed and made by Corning. If you drive a car, it could use our catalytic converter technology to keep the bad emissions out of the atmosphere. If you got a vaccine, it could have been delivered in a Corning vial. So for most people in a given day, they could have interacted with Corning products multiple times. In fact, our optics help make the semiconductor chips that make the devices work and the cars work and everything around us work. So Corning is so vital to progress, but we've always had a quiet confidence about our products. We don't feel the need to go out and shout about what we do. We know it's important to society. Okay, so, so, so the part, John, that is fascinating is the microchip to fingertip is a really interesting story. And from what you've described, Corning plays a super critical role out there. But my obvious question then is, uh, why do you take so long to tell this story? Points of connectivity during COVID became so clear because people were studying from home, they were working from home, they were doing video calls. And we said, you know, Corning plays such a role in enabling connectivity. Wouldn't this be a good time to tell our story of how we enable the chips in the devices and in the data centers and in 5G and 4G, but also we enabled the electronic devices like the laptops and the tablets and the handhelds that people are, the smartphones people are using. So we decided, why don't we just tell people this story and the vital role that Corning plays in microchip to fingertip. Okay, and now John, what I want you to do is explain it, microchip to fingertip in more detail. How did you come up with this concept? What does it really mean? Sure, so we don't make the actual microchips or semiconductor chips, but the equipment that makes those relies on Corning optical components. For example, to write a chip, you need photolithography equipment. That's basically how you direct a laser to write the features. These super smart, smart people are making these tools are writing computer chips at three nanometer features. To actually write those chips, we make optical components that go in the laser modules, and then we actually make the lenses and mirrors that steer that laser light through the photolithography machine to actually write the chip. We also make optics to inspect the chips and the wafers. So our products are embedded throughout the entire semiconductor supply chain to enable the chip, advanced chip manufacturers to make their products. Without our products, you couldn't make chips. So that's part of the story. So we help make the chips. Then when you transmit the data, it goes down optical fiber where you have lasers pulsing 10 billion times a second to get video content, images, text, emails down through the internet. We make that optical fiber. In fact, we were the first company to develop low loss optical fiber. Wow, that's really interesting and great knowledge. Now, you know, John, the part that blows my mind is Corning's role in microchip manufacturing and the potential this offers. Is this something new or has Corning always been in this space, developing microchips? Well, it's interesting. You no, know, we've been involved in microchips for a long time, but the versatility of glass, Corning is a glass founded on op, uh, optics, glass, and glass ceramics. So we have the glass and the semiconductor, which plays at the nanometer scale. But if you can imagine this, Rajiv, we have components on the James Webb telescope, which sits 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. So think about the versatility of glass. It's used to make features super small at the nanometer scale and also used on an object that's 1.5 kilometers from Earth looking millions of light years into space. And glass enables that entire continuum. It's just amazing how versatile this product is. You know, John, I have to say microchips, of course, the lifeblood of the current world, and it seems Corning is the oxygen within. Will this be a big focus for the company going forward? What happened during COVID is that there was a little bit of a supply shock and people slowed down their investment in semiconductor because nobody knew what was going to happen to the economy. But at the same time, there was a demand shock where people bought more devices because they were working and studying from home. So that's why you're seeing people, they can't get their cars in a timely manner. They can't get their appliances because the world's short 
of semiconductor chips. And it's not just the most advanced chips, but it's some of the legacy chips as well. So it's, we've seen tremendous growth the last few years in semiconductor equipment. And we think eventually it will settle out, but historically semiconductors grown at about the rate of GDP because computer chips are so prevalent today, we think the long-term growth will be, be about 2X GDP. So it's been, a, it's been a good business for us in the past. It's growing very rapidly now, and we think it's going to grow, continue to grow, probably 2X its historical rate. So it'll continue to be a very important story for Corning. Um, but also we see other megatrends out there that we'll participate in, like augmented reality, for example, or bendable displays. And also our optical fiber business is growing rapidly because the world's thirst for bandwidth is just incredible. It's growing so rapidly. Wow. So is there more, John, from the Corning story that we don't know something else that is staggering yet unknown? How do you get to be around for 170 years unless you're constantly innovating and advancing? We'll continue to sell the products we've talked about, these optical components to enable semiconductor, our optical fiber, our vial glass, gorilla glass, but we're always advancing, like I said, bendable, augmented reality. And another one we haven't spoken about is automobiles. So as we go to electrification of automobiles and autonomous driving, you're gonna see more glass content in a car. You have LIDAR sensors and radar sensors to help direct the car. That requires glass components. You need lightweight glass so the cars can go further on electric charge. But that glass has to be structurally sound because you have to protect the people in the car. And also, the entire cockpit eventually is going to be glass. Today, you look at a dashboard or a cockpit, and over here is a glove box. Nobody puts gloves in the glove box or a map for that matter. So why don't you have a display in front of the passenger and actually a display around the whole car? And nothing in a car is really square or flat. So this glass is going to be curved and have features and, and curves to it and bends, which is perfect for, for, for Gorilla Glass. So another mega trend we haven't mentioned yet is more glass in cars as we go into electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles. And there's other things out that we're looking at collaborating with our customers. But the one thing you can count on is Corning will continue to advance, will continue to be vital to progress, and all that will revolve around glass and glass ceramics. Rajiv, we would love to host you in Corning and show you all the cool stuff we do here in upstate New York. So anytime you're ready to come, we'd be happy to host you and take you through our labs and show you all of our great technology and great products. Okay, John, I'm going to take you up on that offer. I'm going to come down to Corning and experience all the things. We just spoke about it all today. I want to come and actually see it in action. See you soon. Sounds great, Rajiv. We'll see you soon. Take care.